Hello, and welcome to Sobercast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting Sobercast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Wow! She sounds full of enthusiasm. I'm full of love, baby. Oh, yeah. I want to say good morning. It's good to say good morning. Because I used to hate to see another day come. My name is Liz. I broke my anonymity when I first came in, so it shot to hell, you know that. But it has never bothered me to break my anonymity. I was so grateful, as Carol just said, to get here. Uh, But, you know, I don't tell who else is in AA. That I don't think we should do. We shouldn't break somebody else's. But you are looking this morning at the grateful alcoholic. So grateful that I've lived in a day and time of Alcoholics Anonymous. I am a very grateful alcoholic. And I had never heard the word alcoholic till I got to AA. I didn't even know what they were talking about. See, but I learned at the first meeting I went to. I want Stephanie, first of all, I want Carol to stand up. She has been a living dream to me and has waited, and her and her husband, Al, I don't want to leave the other half off. <laughs> been beautiful. And Stephanie, would you please stand? And stand with your other half, because I don't, I don't separate people. I don't believe in that. And there's no, so there goes his anonymity right away. <laughs> <laughs> and Lou, and, and uh, the other one, Judy. There's a Judy. These people have played. So many of you in this room, many of you have played a part in my life. That's why I can stand here and say, without you, there would be no me. Wouldn't be no me. And also, when you say, I'm glad to see you, Liz, I said, yeah, better than to view me. (laughs) Yeah, I'd rather you see me, too. (laughs) Because when I go bye-bye, I don't know from nothing. You know that. But seeing you helps me. I'm very grateful for every one of you that came out today. I'm very grateful. And I run around my grandchildren and say, how are you, Nanny? I said, like a grateful attitude nut. I put the nut on the back of it because I'm still crazy. You know, I'm not all here yet. But I keep coming. July the 11th of this year, I celebrated 62 years. <laughs> August the 15th, I made 93 years old. And you see, my mom is still running, honey. Oh, yeah, that motor's running. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's been doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. (laughs) He really has been working on me. I'll tell you, I came into AA a very sick girl. AA, like she just said, was only 17 years old. And they didn't want no women in here. And they made the women that came stand outside the door. But when I got here, I came in. And I'll never forget my first meeting. I walk up to the girls behind the coffee counter, and I'm only mimicking them. I don't believe in making fun of nobody. So they said to me, you don't look like an alcoholic. I said, what are they talking about? Let me get out of here. So I start running out the door. Harold Uggams, Leslie Uggams' father, was there at the door with Father Heffern. And Harold hit me over here on the shoulder, and he was screaming at me. What's the matter with you? Where are you going? I said, I don't know this man. How's he screaming at me? I said, well, the girl said I don't look like an alcoholic. I don't know what an alcoholic looks like. 
but I'm about to lose my mind, my home, my children, and everything through drinking. He said, have a seat, sweetie. You in the right place. <laughs> and they put two tables up in the middle of that room, and they all sat around and shared their strength, hope, and experience with me. July the 11th, 1952. And I haven't been any place since. Don't plan to go anywhere either. And I've watched my life unfold. I came in here at 31. But 13 up here, I knew nothing. You guys know everything and know nothing. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't get that smart. <laughs> A guy tells me I should be called, my name should be called knowledge after his name. I said, no, I don't want to ever get too smart for my own good. No, no. I'm still listening and learning and learning to listen. And I still have more things revealed to me as I go along. When I first came to AA, you better not mention God to me, because I'm sober now, and everything should go my way. Oh, God, what a joke. <laughs> All hell broke loose. But I got to tell you how I came to AA. I drank for a period of 19 years, from 12 years old to 31 downhill. And my mom made my first drink at 12. She received ingredients from the welfare, such as rice and raisins. And she made rice wine. And she left me to sieve this rice wine through cheesecloth. Well, honey, let me tell you, I sieved and I sipped. <laughs> Boy, I sieved and I sipped. I loved it. I kept on sieving and sipping. I put on a drunk. Bobby, I don't want to ever leave you out of my life. Where is he? He's over here. <laughs> it just hit me that I didn't mention your name. I'm sorry. Your, your name ain't important anyway, is it? Because <laughs> I know my name. <laughs> Did you notice I said eight? <laughs> but there again, I picked up that drink. And I always wished I could give my mom two drinks to bring her in. Because my mother could have used the whole 12 steps and traditions and all the slogans. That precious doll lived to three days short of 95. So I came from a long line of born livers. Uncle Robert lived to 104. Now, my AA members in my group, Sunrise Beach Group in New York, got me living to 110. I don't believe that. I don't want to live to 110, no. I want to live right now to the fullest each day that I have. And I look for no trouble in my life. I've learned a great thing here lately, and I've been using it to the hills. I can love you but I can detach from your ways and your problems. Oh, hallelujah, you want a freedom? It'll come. Don't get involved with other people and what they think and do and how they act. Now, I've been running around AA recently looking for somebody older than me. <laughs> and I haven't found it until I went to Ohio, I went to Philadelphia four years ago, and I met a man, and he had 60-some years then. So I called him on the phone the other day, and you know his phone is disconnected. <laughs> I hope he's not dead. I hope he's still alive. But you know what I was going to ask him? Please tell me how to handle 62 years of sobriety. It's hard, because I was never, I was taught never to say no to anyone. Bill came out with that sign. I am responsible when anyone reaches out their hand for us. We are to be there. And I hear lately, I have to say no, whether I want to say no or not. And I got to get in the habit of that because I'm not in the habit of saying no. I just finished covering every state in this United States. October, I did my last day in New Mexico. Now, I've been to Alaska, and when I got up to Alaska, they said, 
You got the monkey off your back, but the circus is still going on. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. I got off the plane in Hawaii. They put a layer of flowers around my neck. I went to that end of Hawaii to meet them. They put a layer of flowers. I went to that end of the Hawaii. They put a layer of flowers. I came back to New York. I said, I've never been laid so much in my life. <laughs> flowers up to here. <laughs> and I remember, too, there's a guy going to a grandfather clock. You know them grandfather clocks. They're big. And uh, the guy says, uh, I'll take your clock out to your car. And Mister, he said, no, I'll take my own clock out. Put it on my back. So he put the clock on his back. And as he's walking out to the parking lot to the car, he bumps into a drunk, and he's got the clock on his back. And the drunk looks up to him and says, why can't you wear a watch like anybody else? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, I purposely did what I just did to sh just show you. We do not come in here to die. We come in here to be alive again. Alive again, AA. And thank God that we have AA. And it's a powerful fellowship. Look at all the A's that started from it. What, what the NA, GA, PA, FA? <laughs> all them A's. And they all started after I came into AA. I went and spoke at every one of them. I did OA, and I asked her, what the hell is that? And she said, well, it's Overeaters Anonymous, and we deal with the same principles and tools that you do. And I did 14 years and five months of them. Traveled all over with OA for 14 years. I've opened up four groups. They're still going. I opened up a clubhouse because I believe in dancing, baby. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to dance again. I'm just learning to walk again. And I'm going to walk coming into AA. AA has helped me through 12 operations. AA has helped me through cancer. The doctor looked at me and told me, I'm giving you six months to live. I said, you're not giving me nothing. <laughs> I said, because I live one day at a time. I'm now 47 years an arrested cancer patient, and the doctor's dead. I'm not. <laughs> I'm still hopping planes. I've never had a car in my whole sobriety, and I hop a white dude's car every day. And I gotta tell you all, I upset my neighbors terrible. From a drunk to this, what is she putting down? But I know what I'm putting down. But I must never forget the days I didn't know what I was putting down. And I must never forget the days when people were bringing me up on the carpet. You did this. Because I was out there lying. <laughs> Cheating. Mm -hmm. Ducking. Uh -huh. Dodging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being beat because I love bald-headed men. Oh, God. I used to play up to them. And the next thing you saw me, I'm coming off a wall. Or they're running me out to the cars to lock me up to keep them women from killing me, you know that. <laughs> so I came into AA. But Mr. Bailey told me about AA, my husband. And I'll never forget that. He says, you know, Liz, you're the nicest wife when you're sober. He said, but drunk, you're a Jekyll and a Hyde. Why don't you try this AA? Oh, honey, I laid his soul to rest. You know what I told him to do with AA, too, don't you? <laughs> I came into AA with a very bad mouth. I was off a bar stool at Sutton's Bar and Grill and Monix. And here again, I wasn't even dressing right when I came into AA. I had slits up the back, low cut backs. I had them high heels on. Honey, I flitted all over AA. <laughs> I'm just going. And of course, I remember so clearly that he walked away from me, Mr. Bailey. 
And when I cursed him out, he never mentioned AA again to me. And of course now I keep on drinking. And I watch myself go down. You watch yourself go down. You know yourself when you're not doing the thinking, doing the right thing. Because I did. I watched me. And I suffered with guilt and remorse so bad. Because here I'd go out and do it again and again and again. And I didn't want to do it again and again. I didn't want to be out there. Waking up where I don't know where I'm at. Drinking with the people behind the barber shop. Drinking on the corners. It was supposed to be an ice cream parlor, but a lot of booze was in there. <laughs> and I was in the ice cream parlor. I asked Mr. Bailey to please drink with me. He wasn't a drinker. I said, maybe if you drank with me, I wouldn't want to drink so much and I wouldn't roam. Because he'd come in from work and I'd be leaving out. Where are you going, Liz? Get a quart of milk, loaf of bread. I'd come back a week later. <laughs> or whenever I could get back. See? So I asked him maybe if he drank with me. Now, my sister had three bars in Manhattan, and I went over to the one that was on 8th Avenue with him. And, of course, I got drunk. And coming home, I have to stop at an after-hour joint. I haven't had enough. I didn't drink all night, but I still needed more. And he says, you can't give you enough. And he went home drunk, fell into the radiator, Bust his head open, I guess, so he never took me out again. <laughs> he never asked me out again because he couldn't keep up with me. And if you went in a bar with me and you took a drink like that and you sipped it for 20 minutes, you got on my nerves. <laughs> and I got away from you, honey. No, I got away. You had to drink like I drank. Otherwise, I don't deal with you. And now I'm drinking with hard two-fist drinkers in the VFW hall. Not that they're all drunks, but I had them. So here again, I kept drinking and going down, and I'm watching me go down. I remember, as a young girl, I asked my mother, would she sign for me to marry this man? He was 10 years older than me, Mr. Bailey was. And she says, oh, no, dear. Oh, my dead body. Well, I didn't know I was an alcoholic then. But I knew I had a way about me. Don't you ever tell me what not to do. Ooh, because I'm going to do it and pay all the prices. And I paid a heck of a lot of prices. So I left New York with this very man, January 3rd, 1939, at 10 in the morning. We're standing up in the Baltimore courthouse being married. And uh, I cried through the whole wedding ceremony. And Reverend Harris stopped the marriage, and he said, would you mind telling me what you're crying about? I said, at last I got him. Can I be honest with every one of you? That was the sorriest day of Mr. Bailey's life. <laughs> when he said, I do to Liz Zolwood, he never stopped crying from January 3rd, 1939, that he went home with the Lord, August the 12th, 1986. I don't let the man die. You see that right now. I'm still talking. I'm still talking about him because that's all he. I knew was him, really. And so again, we were married, and near two years of marriage, I thought maybe if I had a baby, that would stop me from drinking. Well, I had the first baby. He's 74 now, and and I he came in the world. Yeah, I said, oh, give me a drink. <laughs> Give me a drink. So I said, well, I'll have another baby to keep him company. Second one came in, ah, give me a drink. Then I had the third one. She came in the world. They were 12, 10, and 5 when I came to AA. And I used to sit between the cribs and cry. I didn't want to be a drunken mother. I really didn't want to be a drunken mother. But I didn't know how to stay sober. And I remember waking up one morning with my head coming off my body. I took Anderson, Alka-Seltzer. They used to have a little package of BC. I don't know if I'm dating anybody. But I used to take that. I'd put a raw egg in the beer. 
and try to straighten my head out, and I couldn't get it. Now, when I was drinking, I said to Mr. Bailey, when I'm drunk, shut up. <laughs> and when I'm coming off a drunk, shut up. That meant I don't want to hear you either way. <laughs> and so I grabbed the Bible that morning. I'm trying to get my head straight. And he passed my room. Don't dig me with my room because you had to have, I had to have my own room. I'm sleeping in the same dress for three days drunk. And all the beer and all the stuff had dribbled down. And I'm a mess. I'm a mess. And I'm trying to get my health together. And he passes my room and he spots me with the Bible. Put that Bible down, you hypocrite. He said, in 20 minutes to an hour, you'll be so drunk, you'll be slapping one of the kids down, hop in a cab, or swing in a corner. I didn't know he even knew me that well. You know? <laughs> so I didn't want to hear his mouth, and I had told him to shut up, didn't I? See? So he kept his mouth going, and I literally ran and jumped up into the second floor window. I want out. I want it out. And as I'm getting ready to jump, there's a little old lady, Nana Backer, down in the yard, and she spots me standing up in the window. Mr. Bailey! Mr. Bailey! You better get her! She's going to jump! And I see his head come out the next window. I see his hands come out, and he's pleading with the woman. Please let her jump. Please. Please. I'll be rid of all my problems, all my troubles. Please let her jump. Well, I want to know who he think he is. I got down at that window. Got back in the bed and pulled the sheet over me and slept that one off. Now, Mr. Bailey happened to be a furrier girl, and I did not have to work. He made good money, and he made me different fur coats every time I had a little bit of dryness. And so this one year, he made me a leopard coat with three linings to a party for the job, even the people that worked on the coat. And he brought that coat home, and he threw it out on the bed. And I looked at that leopard coat, and I hated it. I gave it away. I said he made it so he could spot me anywhere. <laughs> I gave the coat away. I didn't want it. Got sober and wanted it in that time. Too late now. But then I kept drinking. And I kept going down. My last drink... There was a lady coming to sell insurance for the house. And um, I really wanted to see Miss Lindbaum. And I straightened up. I made salads and everything. It's in July. And again, I'm drinking, I told you, with hard two fist drinkers in the post, VFW Post on 110th and Merrick Motor in Queens. The phone rang, and I heard the guy's voice. And I took the phone and I banged it down. I remember he called the second time. I said, don't bug me. There's a lady coming here. I haven't seen her since I'm eight years old. And I really want to see this lady. She's coming to sell insurance for the house. And I banged the phone down on him the second time. Now, I got to tell you what I remember. Notice I'm saying what I remember. I remember going around the corner to the store, and I came back. He was on the phone for the third time. He said, do me a favor, Liz. Hop a cab. I'll introduce you to the people. I'll put you back in the cab, and I'll send you home to your company. I figured, let me do that. He's going to drive me up a wall all day if I don't do that. So I get a cab. And I go over to the post. Here we go. Order a drink. Put the jukebox on. You always hurt the one you love. The one you don't want to hurt. Oh, give me another drink. <laughs> Smile if you're happy. Give me another drink. I told you I'm 93 and I haven't seen Miss Lindbaum until yet. <laughs> 
I believe the woman must be dead by now. Well, I have no, I haven't seen her. But I woke up in one of my son's twin beds. And at the foot of this bed stood my mom over here and Mr. Bailey over here. And my mom had her head just going. Somebody done done something to her. Somebody done done something to her. Because I'm drunk, I'm out. And Mr. Bailey, I look up, he got his head going. And he's saying, no, Mom, no, Mom. Nobody's done anything to her. She happens to be a very sick girl. Well, you know my name was Bitch, you know that. And I, I, had, I had never heard no sick girl. <laughs> I got up out of that bed and I went to the basement of the house. And I stayed in the basement for two days praying to die. I wanted out. I wanted out. And my oldest son was 12, as I said, sitting here at that time. I said, Richard, I can't live this way. This is not the way I want to live. I'm going to go up on the Long Island Railroad. I live three blocks from the railroad. I'm going to jump in front of a train, and I'm just going to end it all. And I started screaming, Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Please help me. Please help me. And Mr. Bailey's words came back to me, Try this AA that your father told me about. And I'm going to tell it to you whether you like it or not. Once you've ever crossed any door sill of Alcoholics Anonymous, you will never, never drink and drug in peace again. Because I've been waiting this 62 years for one of you to come in here and tell me, oh, it's so great out there. I haven't heard it yet. So if you're here, I say capital S, capital T, capital A, capital Y, stay. It gets so good, it scares you. It'll scare you. It gets that good. How many of you welcome you back? And we do welcome you back. Because there's not one of us sitting in this room or any other room can sit in judgment of one another. Come on back. Come on back and make a life for yourself, a gorgeous life. I've heard you say you lost your mother. I lost my mother three days short of 95. My father hung himself while I was sober. My son got shot and killed ten, a few days after his birthday. He had just made 28. A sister of mine went into Manhattan near the George Washington Bridge and jumped 30, 30 floors. She laid on the canopy five days. She left a beautiful five children. I've had those 12 operations that I told you. I've had the honor and privilege of speaking for our late co-founder, Bill Wilson. I spoke for Bill Wilson's 28th anniversary at the Hotel Commodore. 2,700 people that night. I asked Mr. Bailey, would he sit up on the dais with me? He told me to get myself another husband, but I don't know. <laughs> But you know what he did? He showed up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. My sponsor didn't want me there that early. I bought a gold dress, gold shoes. I had everything gold. And you guys thanked my husband for me. And when we arrived back at the house, I never called this a home, that poor little house. I've had every material thing any woman would want on this earth, but it never got me sober. It doesn't keep me sober either. And so here again, he asked me as he banged every pot on the stone to please leave him. And I used the third and the 11th step, please use your tools. Think the happiness I now know. Easy does it. Don't want too much too soon. Grow at God's pace, not your pace. 
first things first, that's when you see me go into the ladies' room. <laughs> yeah. That's first things first. Keep coming. And you know, but for the grace of God. So I remember telling my son I was going to commit suicide. And I remember it came to me what his father said. Try AA. He reached up and took the telephone book off the cabinet, called AA. And there were very few women in AA when I came, very few. And those that were in were still playing games, you know, drinking and doing all this sneaky stuff that they've been doing. And I didn't want to be around them. I really didn't because I really wanted to stay sober. I still really want to stay sober. I don't care what goes down. I stay sober. That picking up that drink would just put me back in the gutter, and I don't think I would live after picking up a drink either right now in my life. The guilt and remorse alone would kill me. Because I know where the answer lies, right here. It's right here. One lousy hour and no dues or fees. Isn't that wonderful? What can, more can you ask for? And nobody is above us but God. No man or woman is over anybody in AA. You don't have to look up to nobody. Here yeah, lately they're getting angry with people in New York because they're talking about me. You're making a martyr. You can make anything you want of me. I stay in my place. I stay in my place. I'm an alcoholic. I am not cured. I am not cured. And I got to remember that. You don't have to. But I better remember that. Because I've never seen anybody go back out and pick up one drink safely in 62 years. I haven't seen it done. It's not done. And I'm no different than you or nobody else. I had better be here if I want to stay sober and be happy, joyous, and free. I had better be right here. I go to any lengths for my sobriety. Any lengths. And it's beautiful. My oldest son has hated me for 54 and a half years. He let me know that he would never forgive me or forget me for my past. But it took me five years in AA. Don't let it take you that long. Even the big book tells you if you don't have a higher power, get one now. Because in those five years that I didn't talk about God, I suffered with deep, deep depression, isolation. I cried, literally cried for five years here. Until when I made five years of sobriety, it dawned on me, this is a gift that we have. And if I want to keep this gift, I've got to keep one hand in AA and the other one in God's hand. And I'm on a journey. I'm not at a destination because I don't plan to stop. You hear me? I'm booked to 016. All right? On my calendar, this is 016. And I call that my insurance policy because I'm going to stay sober to make 016 if God allows me. I'm like Arthur Godfrey, if good God willing. But I, I'm booked. I'll be back here in Erie, Pennsylvania in April. And I'm going to be all over the place. Wherever I'm asked to go, I go. And you see, God lets me go, too. The woman walked up to me today who met me 31 years ago. She liked to blew me out of the room here today. She remembered every word of what I said. She repeated things to me. This blows my mind. I have to be careful. <laughs> I don't. It's so good. You're so good. On Tuesday, I just spoke to 600 of you Tuesday in the city at the Atlantic Group. You couldn't get in the cathedral for them, all up in the, uh, 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 in the balcony, all on those sides. Every pew was taken. They all jammed each other in the pew. And when, when I closed, you know what I said? Like my children said, oh, there she goes to save the world. No, I'm not looking to save no world. 
when I come out here this morning, I just want to touch one of you. You know, you saw Jesus hold that lamb. Well, you're that lamb. And I just want to hold one of you. And if I can touch one person in my lifetime, then I have not lived in vain. And I haven't lived in vain. Because I've had them line up and tell me, I'm the one you touch. I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And you, the love that you give me, it survives me. I need this love. I go home, kiss out, puck it out, and then I pass out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then in the Atlantic group, they lined up. Oh, my God. I thought, I said to them, can I handle this? Can I handle this? I didn't know. But the love that I get really saves. And we do love each other in AA. I have a sponsor that's made 60 years this, way, this month. I'm going to celebrate for his anniversary, speak for him next month. I have one 39 years, 50 years in Florida. Boy, when I get on you, I'm like a stamp on you. <laughs> I'm like, well, now I've grown up to a lifelong stamp on you. Yeah. I don't let you go. I've been with that Bobby Moore for over 30 years, and he sends me cards and love, and his family does. And I'm a family household name. Everybody in the family knows Liz Bailey. It's beautiful. Come in here and please live a good life for yourself. I have an AA baby. She's gorgeous. She's 58 years old. She's had 12 babies, lost six and have six. I have 26 grandchildren. I see them by appointments only. <laughs> No, no, I didn't start no babysitting. Mm -mm. No, because once you start that, you got to keep it up. And I'm, I, 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 nobody interferes between God and my program but me. <laughs> okay? Everybody else comes next to I was shocked this uh, in August when I made a 93. Nine of them took me for dinner. I said to them, let me sit down and get this straight. Nine of you are telling me for dinner? Well, you don't even speak to me all year round. <laughs> but I know who's in charge. It's not me. Let God be in charge. He'll work it out. Steffi and I heard that very much this morning on the TV. God will do for you what you can't do for yourself. And it's true. It's true. I love it. I kept telling her the whole time we're looking at the program. I said, that's me, Stephanie. That's me. He's talking about me. He's talking about me. And he was talking about me. I've been through hell and back in sobriety. I've had to leave my home, move to a room and kitchenette today. I live in a room and kitchenette. I have a Murphy bed. Thank God that I just put it, the pillars in straight, throw it up back in the wall. <laughs> Go in the wall and go, baby. I'm gone. I'm gone. Three telephones in my house. I hear from you from morning, noon, night, and in between. I'm busy with you. I've never, never left you. I don't plan to leave you. I'm going back home and do a group's anniversary in Jamaica. I'm all over the place. But I stay ha happy, joyous, and free. That's what you want to be. And give somebody else happy. Tell somebody a joke every day. I used to uh, start off my talk with the minister preaching. And he says, if you drink alcohol, you're doomed to die. And the little old lady down front, she said, amen. <laughs> he said, if you smoke those cigarettes, you're doomed to die. And she said, amen. He said, if you chew tobacco, she said, look at that. He just stopped preaching and going to meddling. <laughs> So I've been meddling. I hope God will use me for somebody in this room today. I really do. That's my primary purpose of life. I went to look for this apartment. I was living with a granddaughter. My, my children do not like you, okay? 
Don't tell them that you like me either, because they'll hate you even more. <laughs> uh -uh. And my son that didn't speak to me, I told you he called me one day. And I said, who am I speaking to? He says, your son. I said, which one? How many you got, he said. <laughs> I said, in AA, I got a many a son in AA. Got one over there. Look at him. See him? There's, there's a, where's my friend? Oh, he's sitting down there, Marion. He's my son. He don't know it, but I'm, he's learning it right now. <laughs> he's my son, that Marion. And so there again, he says, no, I'm your son. He says, I'm calling to make restitution to you. I said, very good, because I've always loved you, and I'm accepting it. And he sent me a $1,600 ticket to come to California. <clears throat> And I get off the plane, and I'm looking around for him, and I don't see him. And all of a sudden, this young man walks up to me, and he says, I'm looking for my mother. I don't know who his mother is. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at his forehead, and I could see Mr. Bailey up here. And I said, I'm your mother. And he hugged and kissed me and gave me a bouquet of flowers, took me for lunch, and at lunch he said to me, may I have a wine? I said, I didn't come here to change you. I came here to have a good time, baby. <laughs> and the girl, I said, I'm going to book you to speak every night. I said, no, you're not. I said, I'll do two for you, because I come to visit my son. I put my son first. And so I did two meetings. First meeting, the girl brought me back home. She said to you, to, to my son, boy, your mother was a queen today. And he gave a dirty look. <laughs> the second meeting, a young man had taken me to in California. And he got out of the car, went around and hugged my son and said, boy, your mother got a standing ovation today here in California, and they don't do that in California. And he got a triple dirty look. <laughs> so that's why when I came back to New York, I said, please don't tell my family that you like me. They can't handle it. Mr. Bailey couldn't handle it with Bill Wilson's dinner. Started from the father. And so I don't try to push AA on my family, but it is a family disease. And I'm happy that I've learned that I can love them. And I do love them. But I don't have to get involved with their ways and what they think or do. And here lately they've been throwing parties, but they haven't been inviting me. <laughs> I want you to laugh because I laugh. I'm happy that they don't invite me. I don't want to be around drinking people and pot smoking people. They're not my class, and they're not talking my language, and I'm not talking theirs either, and I don't want to have to watch my glass or cup or whatever it is, because misery loves company, and you got to watch yourself when you go around drinking people. Live and let live. live. There's a slogan right there. Live and let live. I think you guys have been beautiful listening to me today. I want to cry because I want to thank you for being in my life. And these are my last days. You all know that 93. How many have I got left? How many? I don't know. But every one I get, I want to live in the moment. In the moment, honey. In the moment. I fell in love. And even falling in love is very painful and dangerous. But I can love that person and detach from them. And it's wonderful to learn that. Learn. And not everybody's good for everybody. Find yourself a sponsor. Don't do it alone. You got over 7 million of us today. It was only 150,000 when I came in the AA. So I've grown up to 7 million of you. We're in all the world today. My tapes are in all the world. I never dreamt that with my head laying in vomit. Come on. <laughs> Who would know I'd have these things happen to me? And Carolyn and Al have bestowed in this group, the 
committee. I want to thank the committee for your love and service. For the young lady that walked me into this room tonight, thank you for that. Because I remember the time you'd be running from me. You wouldn't want me around. I don't have her around. Don't tell her about anything going on. I used to hear that when I was drinking. But in sobriety, I've had the greatest honors bestowed upon me. And it can happen to you, too. A very good friend who drives me every Sunday morning. I belong to the beach meeting in New York. These rooms got too small. The people would never be able to get in here on my anniversary. And Lou and all of them were coming from New York, from Cleveland. I've been in Cleveland for ages and in Ohio. And they would all come to New York to help me celebrate. And I didn't like it that some of them couldn't get in the room. Why would they take a trip like that and can't get in the room? So I said to the young man, I can't celebrate anymore, Ron. He says, yes, you can, on the beach. So I started with 40 years of sobriety on the beach. I've been there 22 years now on the beach. 1,400, 1,500. The lowest I know has been 900. Last year, this year past, 2,000. They come from all the world after me on the beach. And this is through the grace of God, not through the grace of Liz. Through the grace of God. I shook a minister's hand about a year ago, thanking him for his message. And he took his hand and he threw it back like that. He says, don't thank me, thank God. I said, do you know that God works through you and you to me? He said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> mm. I'll tell you the truth, I didn't go back to the church either. <laughs> Because I know what he's doing. He's sitting up there hustling money to open up another church. <laughs> I'm telling on him, you know? Yeah. And in AA, we don't care about money. But I do do a thing in New York for myself every year. When I go to share a day, when we have meetings all day in a day, this year I wrote out a check for $62. I give a dollar a year for my sobriety to share a day, to keep intergroup open. Intergroup is our headquarters. And we only had one intergroup when I came into AA, and that was New York one. Now every county has one, but I only deal with my county. And it's beautiful. It's a good feeling. And I got a little secret to tell you. Anything that you give out. The witness is right here today. It comes back to you. And sometime overflowing. And today has been an overflow. Thank each one of you. Thank each one of you. Thank each one of you. Thank you for your love and service. Thank you for your love and service. And above all, I want to thank what you call him yesterday, and I said it sounded like spaghetti sauce. Alfredo. Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> she was getting out the car. She said, Alfredo. I said, boy, that sounds like spaghetti sauce. <laughs> but he's been catering to me the whole time from the airport to here today. And I thank him for that, for his love and service. And again, go with God. Live a good life for yourself, because Liz Bailey does love you. And I will go to any lens for any one of you. I have done that. Because when I first came into AA, there were no rehabs, and I used to bring he or she into my home to take care of you, get you back on your feet, until you started to steal from me. <laughs> and I had to go to the pawn shop and buy, take my stuff out all the time. So then rehabs came in. And then you abuse rehabs. They abused rehabs. And they had to close. A lot of them had to close for abuse. They went in there to socialize and not get sober. And the insurances were not going to pay that money anymore. See? So stay sober. It's easier. 
than getting sober. It's much easier. And love one another, please. Love one another. Lou Jones, I love you. And I hope to be in your company again. And Jan uh, Judy, your company again. And above all, thank you, Stephanie, for being my chaperone. She used to travel with me over the years, and they started a back. Thank you to you that you started a back with me again. She's a living dog. Did you all give Stephanie a round of applause for me? God bless you all. Have a blessed day today. And go with your higher power of your own choosing, as the big book said. If you don't have one, find one now. I don't want to overdo it because you're behind. Can't take no more than your head can stand. <laughs> I should close better than that book, right? <laughs> there were three sisters. And one sister put her foot in the tub. She says, was I getting in the tub or out the tub? <laughs> Let me call the other sister. The other sister's coming up the stairs. Stopped in the middle of the landing. Was I coming down the stairs or going up the stairs? <laughs> Let me call the younger sister. And the younger sister said, my God, I hope I never get as sick as them. <laughs> them two. And she knocks on the table. She says, who's knocking at the door? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.